Chapter 7 Zlot After his shower, Zeddy took the violet crystal and little book of magic from his pocket and put them in his backpack. He had the feeling they were going to come in handy, even if he didn't know how to use them. Then Zeddy lay on his bed for several long minutes, staring at the ceiling, just hoping his mind would go blank and he could stop thinking about all the things he'd learned. As he gazed at the white ceiling, he thought he saw something from the corner of his eye. He looked over near his lamp, expecting to see a moth fluttering near the lamplight. But he didn't see one. I must be tired, Zeddy thought to himself. Although his father was often away on business, tonight the house felt especially empty and kind of scary. Zeddy walked around the house and peered in at his mother lying in bed reading an old paperback book. No matter how many books were converted to digital form and paper copies recycled, Zadie read the same ten paper books over and over. She said she loved the way a paper book felt and smelled. She said it made reading real. Although Zeddy often snuck across the hall to watch his mother read, it always made him smile to see how engrossed in the story she would become. He coughed lightly to get her attention. Zadie looked up from the Count of Monte Cristo to see Zeddy standing in the doorway. "'Are you okay, dear?' Zadie asked. Zeddy was ashamed to say that it felt creepy to sleep in his own bed, so he cautiously asked, "'Mom, can I sleep in here? It just feels, I don't know, weird tonight. Can I?' "'Of course, Zeddy. You know you're always welcome to sleep in here, honey.' Zadie answered as she held out her arms for Zeddy to come snuggle with her. She, too, felt the strangeness in the house, and Zeddy's warm hug felt nice and comforting. She pulled back the sheet, and they lay down snuggled together like only a mother and child can snuggle. Zeddie nestled his head against Zadie's shoulder, and she wrapped her arm around him. She picked up her book and began to read aloud from the Count of Monte Cristo to Zeddy as he lay there, eyes closed in thought. He wanted to immerse himself in the story and float away on the smuggler's ship with Edmund and Jacopo. He wished to be anywhere where his mind wouldn't be swirling with so many new thoughts and fears. As his mother read, he began to drift on the smuggler's ship to that place between awake and asleep. Blue and golden stars began to dance in the dark behind his eyelids, and Zeddy felt himself float up and up. As Zeddy floated through space and time, past stars and planets, he found himself floating to a world that looked relatively familiar. For an instant, he seemed to float right along the border of night and day. Then, as he passed from space to planet, he could feel the warmth of the sun in the bright blue sky. He looked down at the bright green grass, splattered with purple and violet flowers. He dropped softly to the ground and lay in the grass, looking up at the ethereal sky he had just passed through. All around him white butterflies flittered and fluttered. They were so translucent they almost appeared invisible. "'Let's play Zlot,' a little voice beside him whispered. How? asked Zeddy. Whoever catches the most zutterflies in an hour wins. You have your net already. See how many zutterflies you can catch, the little voice whispered. Zeddy looked down and found a butterfly net held tightly in his grasp. So he set off catching zutterflies one after another. They seemed so easy to catch. As Zeddy filled his net with glowing, humming zutterflies, he realized that he was floating higher and higher into the air. The zutterflies carried him up like a hot air balloon. What should I do? Zeddy asked, waiting for the little voice to answer. You won this game. Go ahead, float in the air till the zutterflies get tired. Then you will float back to the ground, and I'll be waiting for you, the little voice answered. Zeddy floated in the blue sky, every now and then pulling back the blue to peek out at the vast dark universe with its glistening stars and spinning planets. He smiled and laughed. He felt happy and free, and there was an odd security in this new place he had found. He almost wished he could stay forever. Soon the zutterflies began to tire, and Zeddy floated down, down, down. As he settled back onto the plush green grass, Zeddy closed his eyes and listened to the quiet. The glowing of the zutterflies still twinkled behind his closed eyes. What is a zutterfly? Zeddy wondered out loud. We are something new and strange, but we won't hurt you, the little voice whispered. Are you a zutterfly? Zeddy asked as he continued to lie in the vagrant green grass with his eyes closed against the warm golden sun. I am, the little voice answered. My name is Zmali. I know it is so nice here on Zamira, little Zeddy, but I need you to wake up now. Wake up. Wake up. Zeddy slowly opened his eyes, squinting into the darkness to see. What an amazing dream. It seemed so real, and that little voice. It told him to wake up. 
but he wondered why a voice in a dream would tell him to wake up. He blinked a few times and rubbed his eyes. He was about to try to go back to sleep when he saw something from the corner of his eye. Zeddy turned his head to see what was there, and he couldn't believe his eyes. A silvery glowing zutterfly from his dream floated up to his face and nearly lit on his nose. Zeddy sat upright, swatting one hand in front of him and reaching for the light switch with the other. Wait, little Zeddy, do not be afraid. I just helped you dream of playing Zlot on Zamira so that you would not be afraid of me. My name is Zmali, and I am a zutterfly from Zamira, the little glowing zutterfly said. The zutterfly was unlike anything Zeddy had ever seen. It almost appeared to be made of clear plexiglass, harder than real glass but not quite solid plastic. It was translucent but at the same time appeared almost white. It flittered and fluttered and cast an odd glow into the darkness. But much to Zeddy's amazement, when he turned on the lamp, the zutterfly disappeared. Where are you, Zmali? Are you here? Zeddy whispered loudly, scared it had all just been a dream. I'm here, Zeddy, but until you learn how to find me in the lights of earth, you will need to turn out the light to see me, Zmali answered. Zeddy turned out the light, and Zmali glowed in front of him again, fluttering right near his face. Zeddy smiled, relieved he had not dreamt all the events from this magical night. As he focused on the glittery zutterfly, Zeddy asked, Can you tell me about Zamira? The zutterfly settled on the pillow next to Zeddy. It began to tell him of the warm, beautiful planet Zeddy had just visited in his dream. Zamira was a land full of zutterflies and all kinds of floating, flying things. There were people there as well, very similar to Zeddy and his mother. Zeddy listened intently for any hope that Zmali might mention his father or someone who would want to take his father. I don't mean to be rude, but exactly what are you? I know you said you were a zutterfly, yet I'm not even sure what that is. Is that some kind of butterfly? Zeddy asked as he tried to focus on the flickering, fluttering glow. I'm not sure how I compare to your insects here on Earth. On Zamira, I'm a dark matter zutterfly, Zamali answered. What exactly is dark matter? asked Zeddy. It's what I'm made of, answered Zamali. I'm only a dark matter zutterfly. I don't know how to explain what I am here on Earth. I'm sorry I can't answer better than that. I bet Professor Zenith will know what you are, Zeddy said with confidence. Do you know how you got here? Your father brought me back here in his pocket, but I escaped in the morning light and hid until I knew I could trust your family. There are many people in the universe who would want to capture me and study me, as zutterflies are rarely seen outside the deepest depths of space. But I trust you now, and I know you are the key to my return to Zamira, Zmali answered. My father brought you back in his pocket. Does that mean he has been to Zamira before? Is he there now? Zeddy asked eagerly. I know he has been there, but I'm not there to know if he's there now. When he was there and captured me, it was very quickly, I think. You see, time does not have much value on Zamira. The only thing we keep track of is the amount of time it takes for our king to return. A glorious day we still await, Zmali answered. Your king? How long has he been gone? Zeddy asked curiously. I believe it will be two hundred years shortly since he left on his adventure. It must be an exciting one to stay gone so long. He is missed very much by our people. Are you sure he's coming back? Zeddy asked, trying not to sound rude. Oh, definitely. He is the Z-King of Zamira. He taught us how to speak this language of yours and the language of our forefathers, and we taught him to speak the language of the world of Z. I have observed you today, and I knew you would respond much better to this language than my native language. All of our words begin with the letter Z, and this can be confusing for people not fluent in our language. I hope it is to your liking that I speak this language, said Zmali, meekly. I am thrilled to be able to talk to you, answered Zeddy. I hope that I can find a way for you to return home, but I am so very tired. Tomorrow I am to begin an exciting adventure. Would you like to come along and see if we can find you a way home? Oh yes, that would be most excellent. I do appreciate your kindness. I know I have trusted the right earthling with my safety. I will repay you whenever I can, answered Zmali exuberantly. Can I put you in my backpack so that I can find you tomorrow in the light? That way I can make sure you are safe and know where to find you, Zeddy asked. Of course, answered Zmali. It would be my pleasure. I'm awfully tired and I've had a long, tiresome day. Zeddy slowly got out of bed and held out his hand for Zmali. Much to Zeddy's surprise, Zmali didn't weigh a bit. Zmali actually didn't feel like anything at all. 
How weird and wonderful, Zeddy thought to himself. Maybe this is the puzzle I have to solve. Amazing. Zeddy slipped Smalley in his backpack and whispered, Good night, Smalley. We'll figure all this out tomorrow. Good night, Zeddy. Thank you for your help, Smalley answered. Thank you for being part of my amazing adventure, Zeddy whispered back as he turned to go back to bed. He could only hope that the rest of his dreams would be as beautiful as his dream of Zamira. <laughs>